SV or SV. We're building a smart contract platform that runs entirely on top of Bitcoin SV. So uh, a little bit about who we are. Um, my partner, Glenn, unfortunately, he can't be here today, but uh, he's a talented software engineer, also my roommate back in New York. Um, he's well-versed in everything, uh, Kubernetes, Linux, uh, and he's setting up our backend infrastructure. My name is Sean. Um, I'm currently an engineer at blockchain.com, where I work on the web wallet. Um, to, my mo to my knowledge, it's the most used piece of non-custodial uh, wallet software in the world. Um, and I've got a confession to make. I actually used to be an Ethereum developer. <laughs> now, <laughs> exactly. And um, it was actually relatively early on. In uh, 2015, I started developing on the protocol right when it was released. And I actually thought it was a really nice way to develop blockchain apps. You've got a small piece of code, just an object-oriented class that's really easy to test and audit before you deploy. You deploy it, and it runs autonomously. So after college, I started working at Consensus, did some consulting work with large companies like BP and Shell. Um, but I ended up getting fed up with the lack of scalability on the protocol. So I started to get into research. Um, worked a little bit on the CBC Casper protocol, where essentially you're trying to find the maximum clique in a random graph, which is a really well-known NP-hard problem. So, right, it seems pretty impossible. So uh, what about state channels? Um, well, red balloons in Bitcoin, uh, pretty concise proof. Uh, it's mathematically impossible to incentivize such a system. So I started looking into sharding, um, and some of the efforts around replacing the Ethereum virtual machine with WebAssembly. And I was a little discouraged until I realized that all this was actually possible today on Bitcoin SV. Um, next. <laughs> so uh, what exactly are we building? Now on one end, we've got um, a set of open source tools that make it really easy to build, test, compile, deploy your contracts. And we're developing out a proprietary cloud infrastructure that will automate the orchestration, scaling, monitoring, and so forth of all these different contracts. So a little bit more about the open source tools. Um, so when I was uh, setting out to develop this, I was looking at the most popular libraries out there today. And by far and away, Truffle is the most popular. It's got 30K installs per week on NPM, which is pretty impressive. And so what did I do? I literally just adopted the exact same API interface, but now it runs on Bitcoin and WebAssembly, and it's available today on NPM. Um, next, uh, actually earlier this week, we released a new, a new tool called Gear Nano, and this will orchestrate all of the services you need to actually run your contract. This is built on Unwriter's uh, Planaria tools, so it'll spin up a Planaria targeted at your contract, um, uses Planarium uh, as the HTTP interface and DB storage, and with no code and just a few command line interface arguments, and uh, you can get up and running really fast. Um, so I'm mentioning things in the pipeline, uh, web-based browser ID, and a Chrome plugin to interact with your contracts. Right, and in Ethereum, you've got Remix, you've got MetaMask. Uh, I'm coming for them next. Um, a little bit about our cloud platform. Um, right, I'm an application developer, and I know how much of a pain it is once you have your app working to get it going in production. And so we're going to take care of all of that for our developers. Um, everything's built in Kubernetes. Um, we're not tied down to any cloud provider. We can shop around. We can run our own hardware if we want to. We're going to provide uh, state-of-the-art logging, metrics, um, scaling, everything you need. So there's been an impressive explosion of BSV apps over the last few months, and I think a large part is really the increase in the upper turn size to 100 kilobytes. Now, this is really interesting because now users can actually upload full files and then apps can use them. That combined with the MetaNet protocol is actually a really powerful construct, but we want to take it to the next level. Not only do you want to create files, right? You want to be able to run files. You want to be able to pipe input to files. You want to pipe the output of one file to another file, and so on and so forth. And for that to be possible, you need a common execution and runtime environment that all the nodes agree upon. So it's not dependent on your OS or your underlying hardware. And that's exactly what WebAssembly offers us. Um, so we want to bring uh, the infrastructure for where we essentially have hard drive plug plugins. We have this distributed virtual file system into a distributed virtual operating system. Uh, where we actually are using the full memory and CPU capabilities running natively on top of Bitcoin. So uh, a little more details about how this all works, right? Uh, like any smart contracting platform, you first need to deploy your contract. We need the definition of the state machine. So 
yeah, similar to any other platform. Uh, we've got our gear contracts library, makes it really easy to develop, compile, deploy. You push it on chain, not only do you push the WASM bytecode, you also put in the CPP and header file that it's derived from, as well as a JSON ABI of that contract, um, as well as an mscript module, which provides the JavaScript interface to that underlying WASM bytecode. All that's packed into a tarball, thrown on chain. Um, next, we're using Unwriter's tools, uh, Neon Planaria, which will uh, scrape and filter from the chain uh, for the contract, uh, aggregate all the contract calls by block, and since we have the flat UTXO set of any given block, we can provide indices to those transactions, we can order them, feed them into the contracts. Um, Next, right, so the most popular uh, contracts today are really simple constructs. We got in Ethereum, ERC-20, super simple fungible token spec. Um, we've got uh, ERC-721, non-fungible token spec, and we've got uh, naming service contracts. So I've already ported all those over to C++ and they're already running today. Really small amount of code, uh, easy to audit. So we believe this idea of the MetaNet OS uh, in gear is really the future of the financial legal infrastructure, right? Anybody can independently uh, audit and verify any one of these contracts. So once we have all these apps running, this makes it really easy for, for legal service providers, auditors, and so on to plug into this ecosystem and start verifying contracts. So at the end of the day, we want to be a SaaS company. We sit at the top at the infrastructure layer. We provide tools directly to the developers who provide us with the apps, who we then serve to the end users. This is gonna allow us to scale over the long tail of use cases of contracts, and we expect to get really good margins. Um, we are using cloud platforms, but we expect to get like over 80% margins. Think about us like Squarespace for contracts, right? Less than a dollar per day, we'll host your contract. If it's a concert ticket, you only want it up for a month, that's fine, we'll let it die. Um, next, so the roadmap, right? A couple of months back, I came up with this idea kind of hashed it out over a weekend, submitted a blog post. Um, it got over 15,000 reads uh, in a week, um, a lot of traction online, so it said, hey, I'm gonna get serious about building this out. Um, been hard at work at the open source tools, already have gear contracts, the Truffle equivalent, easy compile test deployer contract with Gear Nano, automates all the backend orchestration. Um, we're gonna continue to harden these protocols, um, get developer feedback, We've got docs coming out this week, um, and by the end of the year, we'll have an API endpoint, you send us a payment, and we'll host your contract. Now, um, in the long term, as we prove out the protocol, we definitely see the most use cases in financial technology. Um, and in order us to um, issue legal, valid financial instruments, we're gonna need a banking partnership. Now, luckily, we live in New York, where there's a lot of infrastructure involved, and FinTech companies getting relationships with banks, and once we're able to, we do a lot of interesting things, right? Buy stocks, deposit them in the bank, trade the depository notes, uh, tokenize fiat, vaulted gold, debt instruments, and so on. And all that will be possible soon on gear. Um, now that kind of concludes the presentation. Um, <coughs> people may not realize it yet, but uh, yeah, we think that Bitcoin plus MetaNet plus gear is the future of smart contracts and the ultimate Ethereum killer. Thank you.